Greetings and welcome to the COVID-19 briefing lesson eight. And at this point, you guys understand enough about the anatomy and physiology of our respiratory system so we can go ahead and explain why coronavirus makes you sick. So last time we left off with this, we had this alveolus here with its type one and type two pneumocytes. And this one of these uh, type two pneumocytes got infected with coronavirus and coronavirus took it over and used it to um, make a whole bunch of copies of the virus and that damaged the cell. And when the, uh, when the cell got damaged and released those virus particles, it also releases these chemicals called specific inflammatory mediators, which are chemicals that send out a signal to your body that it's under attack and it needs to respond to that attack. So that response, that initial response to attack is called inflammation. And uh, that's what we're going to talk about today is inflammation, because it's actually the inflammation that causes a lot of the symptoms of COVID-19. So remember, we looked at um, blood, we took it and we put it in a tube and we spun it down in a centrifuge and we ended up with the red blood cells on the bottom and we ended up with a solution of water and uh, proteins and such on the top. But what I didn't point out was this little layer right here, this white layer they called a buffy coat because it looks kind of foamy. And what's in there are other cells besides red blood cells, because of course, besides red blood cells, we've got white blood cells. So white blood cells, there's lots of different kinds of them. So here's all the different kinds of white blood cells. And although they are super diverse, what they all have in common is that they're involved in your immune system. So they're involved in fighting infection. So we're not going to go into all the different kinds of white blood cells, thank goodness. But we are going to look at them kind of in general terms. So here's an alveolus right here. Here's a type one pneumocyte right here and a type two pneumocyte. This particular model I found on the internet and this is modeling how influenza infects your lungs and influenza infects um, white blood cells that live inside of your lungs and it actually attacks the type one pneumocytes. But here we are talking about coronavirus, which attacks the type two pneumocytes. So once that happens, once those um, specific inflammatory mediators are released, that fires up this white blood cell that's called a macrophage. Macro means big and phage means eater. So a macrophage is a big eater. And these white blood cells actually live inside of your lungs because if you think about it, we're breathing in all the time and we're breathing in viral particles and bacterial particles and fungal particles, which could infect us. So we have this resident uh, white blood cell called the macrophage that lives in there and its job is to eat up those invaders. So when that type two pneumocyte erupts with that virus, it sends those um, inflammatory mediators out into the alveolus and the macrophage um, picks up on that and it produces its own inflammatory mediators or cytokines. And those chemicals, those cytokines, then leave the alve alveolus and they travel through this interstitial space right here, the space in between the alveolus and this capillary. And uh, they enter this capillary. And these cells that are lining the capillary, they get that message. This is a chemical messenger saying, hey, stuff's going down. You guys need to come to the rescue. 
So what happens is these cells, these endothelial cells, they um, contract and that opens up space in here in between the cells. And there normally is space in between those cells. And that's how um, oxygen and water and carbon dioxide and stuff can pass through the wall of the capillary. So we're looking at a capillary right here, which is a little blood vessel that's leaky on purpose. So water can normally leak through the gaps in between these cells and carbon dioxide can and oxygen can. But when those cytokines um, encounter these cells, that causes them to contract and these spaces in between the cells get bigger. So what happens is the capillary gets leaky. And that's on purpose because what we want to do is we want to allow enough space for white blood cells to leave the capillaries and enter the point of infection. These cells, they're not just like globs that kind of like, uh, that bounce around based on like a flow. It's, it's not like an inner tube in a river. It's more like an otter. They can self-propel. They can, they can self-propel through liquid, but what, what they really do is they grab onto the walls of cells and they use these feet called pseudopods to kind of pull themselves along. And they, they're, they're kind of smart. They can respond to those cytokines, those chemical messengers, and they can know where that's coming from based on diffusion gradients. And they can leave the capillary to go fight the infection. But while those spaces open up, more liquid, more plasma or blood water leaves the capillaries also. So when that, uh, when that water leaves the capillaries, here's what happens. So here we are inside of this alveolus. And we're modeling it with this circle right here. This is an alveolus. So water inside of the alveolus, water molecules, you guys remember, have positive ends and negative ends. So they stick to each other really well. And that cohesion or that stickiness would cause this alveolus to collapse. So um, alve alveoli have evolved to include these type 2 pneumocytes which secrete a surfactant, which reduces that surface tension. So in the presence of the surfactant, the attraction, so you could think of this, um, this triangle as modeling surfactant getting in the way of the cohesion between these water molecules. So with the surfactant there, the, the attractiveness between the water molecules is diminished and the alveolus is prevented from collapsing. But what we have going on is, first of all, those type 2 pneumocytes are getting damaged by the virus. And then the second thing we have going on is, due to that increased permeability in the capillary that's associated with the alveoli, the water leaves the capillary and it builds up outside of the alveolus and it creeps into the alveolus also so that causes two things when it builds up on the outside it creates pressure on the outside of the alveolus which um, forces the alveolus to shrink or to collapse the second thing that's going on is when you have more water in here and the same amount of surfactant the concentration of surfactant goes down. The concentration of surfactant becomes too low in order to prohibit the cohesion of these water molecules. And the water molecules um, grab onto each other and collapse the alveolus. So you get alveolar collapse going on. So here is 
a model of that happening. Here's healthy alveoli here, and they're not showing any water in there. This is a bit of an exaggeration, but here is water accumulating or pooling inside of those alveoli. This is called pneumonia, by the way. Pneumonia is when water accumulates inside of your alveoli. So when that happens, the cohesion causes the alveoli to collapse. So here's normal alveoli, and this is what it looks like when they're collapsed. And this is just a drawing. Here's an actual like histological slides of that happening. So normal alveoli, all the pink are cells and all the white is where cells aren't. So you can see that um, the openings in the alveoli are nice and big, whereas down here, the walls of the alveoli have gotten thick and the amount of space, if you just compare the amount of white in this slide to the amount of white in this slide, it's much less, which means much less air is getting into the lungs. This um, increases what is called work of breathing, which is a fancy way of saying it makes it really hard to breathe. The other thing that happens is that the normal gas exchange that's supposed to happen inside of those alveoli goes down and less oxygen gets into your blood. So that's called hypoxia. And if less oxygen is getting into your blood, then your whole body is going to suffer. You're going to feel tired. You're going to have shortness of breath. You're going to be breathing fast and shallow. And those are some of the key um, symptoms of COVID-19. So we got a bit to go here. So I'm going to break this lecture up and stop here. And next we're going to pick up where we left off. Hope all you guys are um, doing good and look forward to seeing you again one day.